Hi guys, in this video we will build our first access database and we'll have an overview on the various objects and subsequent videos will then treat each object, be it tables or queries, more in depth. Now, to start, we start X by double clicking it and that's what I get and now I choose, I, I double click on blank database and I should get a new database and uh, access creates that database and places us immediately into an empty table and actually here we can immediately input data but that's where I uh, or what's important to show you something and basically in access it is not like normal programs that um, where you just input the data like in Excel for instance in Access, it is recommended to work first on the design of, let's say, a table or a query before inserting any data. And that's what we're going to do here. And each object in Access has got uh, at least two views. One is the data view, basically the view you see, you normally expect. And then there's the design view. In the design view is basically where you fix the structure of that object. And, uh, and the data view is basically the view where you can view uh, the finished product, that finished object. And this is what we're going to do here. We have here a, a table ready to get some, uh, some data, but we wish to change the structure of that table and to, 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 to remove, to add fields, fix field types, etc. So what we do here, we go into design view, there's that uh, thing here at the left that that uh, triangle and ruler and we go there and first it asks us to, um, to to save that table and we'll save it we'll call it contacts okay and now we are in the design view okay now uh, let me first show you the data I want to have in this uh, in this table So here's, here's the data that is supposed to get into the database. And the first, uh, the first question I have is, what are my fields? Because if you look at our design view, we should first fix the fields. Now, what are the fields? Well, the fields are basically the columns that we got. Basically, the field names are basically the headers of the columns. Each field, as I mentioned before, each field is a specific type of information. So basically, all names come in here, all surnames come in here, companies, etc. So the fields we have to fix for our table are name, surname, company, position, and telephone. And that's what we're going to do here in Access. Uh, I don't need that ID thing. So what I do, I just click it here, outside in that gray um, area and then just go delete rows and it should delete deleting fields yeah okay yes okay great so now like I said our um, our um, uh, table should have the following names first first name okay then the next field and you see automatically it sets the data type to text the second field that I need is surname yeah third is company then I got position and then I got telephone so basically what I did I just mirrored that uh, th those column headers here uh, by the way I could not use the name as a, as, a, as, a, as a name for a field in X because that that name is reserved so that's why I uh, chose uh, first name and another thing I like to underscore my fields uh, if they got like multiple words that's why I use an underscore some people join them together some people use underscores some people just use an empty space everybody's got his preferences do whatever you want but like stick to it okay now that that's fixed we fixed the field names now the next question is what kind of data types are our names well 
all of them are uh, text and you might say well hold on what about phone numbers aren't phone numbers uh, numbers well no because uh, I mean phone numbers it's true that phone numbers look like numbers but in effect they're not numbers because um, you're never gonna add two phone numbers together you're never gonna multiply a phone number with, with something else and uh, the same thing um, uh, is, 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 um, is valid for account numbers or uh, you know social security numbers or car numbers you know there are certain numbers which look like numbers actually but are in effect text because you're never going to do any mathematical operation on these numbers and actually uh, uh, setting the data type to text is cheaper than number because cheaper not like you know it's going to cost me less dollars but cheaper in terms of memory okay so that's why when I know when I'm 100% sure that these numbers are never going to be used for calculations I can uh, set them as text that's why I set phone telephones here as text okay right now we set that type the data type as text now comes the last step and basically field size how big is each field now why why would you want to do that well so here I have like uh, three examples of fields this field has been set too big the red the red stuff is the data in the field and you can imagine each field is a sort of a beaker or a glass and in it comes the data so this is a field and there's the data in it now this field is obviously too big so what's the problem here well a big field consumes too much memory so basically here uh, access sets each text field to 255 field size 255 letters would fit in that in that field so uh, you know if I had just have like uh, one or two rows of data or in our case like here we like like got like just 10 people that's no big deal you, you don't have to work with sizes but like, what if you got like 10,000 or or a hundred thousand rows in that thing then size becomes an issue and that's why having a field which is too big for for the data uh, uh, assigned for it is would consume too much memory again here uh, most databases uh, would contain uh, uh, thousands or tens of thousands of, 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 of rows of, of, um, of records so basically what you don't want you don't want to have to consume too much memory unnecessarily waste memory and here's the other extreme a field is too small so the data wouldn't fit in here so basically let's say if I uh, would set the field size to 5 and that is obviously not enough for my phone numbers because my phone numbers if i look at them they're at least six digits okay so uh, the, the guy wouldn't be able to to type in the complete phone number so that's not a very effective that's not very helpful and so that's why one always has to think what kind of data is supposed to go in that field and um, you always gotta put some tolerance so that's why here that that thing is great because it, the, the the data fits in it but there's also some tolerance because uh, if I go back to our database with the phone numbers okay in our case here they're like six digits but you know what you don't know so let me do it 15 you know so I still got a lot of tolerance I'm way better off than 255 the default the, the size and you know actually now I have like six digit phone numbers but who knows you know because again another thing about databases databases tend to have a long life so you got to plan for the long term because what you don't want to do when you let's say I, I do that database and I give it to you and you are not a database expert you're just a businessman trying to run this business now what do you do if you find out whoa I can't you know uh, the field only allows me to type in five digits and I need seven or eight what do you do you don't know anything about design view and access and stuff like that so you have that's that's a bad thing so you'd have to call the developer and tell them you know what yeah, that doesn't fit so that's that's not a good thing you see because access is different than other programs like when you when you do something in Excel or in Word mostly the developer is also the user the guy who's building the spreadsheet isn't most pro most probably also the user who's using it 
With access, it's, it's mostly a different scenario. In most cases, somebody, some developer, some guy is building the access database and some other guy, a user, is using it. And in most cases, that user has absolutely no knowledge of databases. So that's why you as a developer have to design in the long term. And what you don't want to do, you don't want to have the user have to go to the design view and change things. You don't want to do that because he doesn't know he he doesn't know how to do that okay so that's why we have to fix things in advance and cater for eventualities and have tolerances in our design see that's the thing that's why I said like okay you know what let me put the phone numbers 15 what about position well let's see our let, let's look at our positions okay what do you think maybe 25 so and that's that's there's no right or wrong here. Obviously, one one judges by experience, by you know uh, what kind of what kind of uh, uh, data do I expect in that field, and I adjust the sizes accordingly. Company, let me say again, let me say thirty surnames. Uh, let's do thirty-five for instance, and first name let's say twenty-five. So now I've 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 set the field sizes. They, they might be for some people oh way too much and for other people way too little it doesn't matter you know what I'm way off better than uh, leaving it all at 255 so already saved a lot of memory in this case okay and if I find you know if I find that you know the data is is, is the fields are still way too big for the data okay I can always uh, make him smaller in the next version but you know the most important thing is that the user is able to enter all his data that's the most critical thing Right, so now we've fixed the field sizes, we fixed the, uh, the field data types, and uh, sorry, we, we sorry, let me just recap. We fixed the field names, we fixed the data types, and we fixed the field size for each uh, field. And you see, every time you want to change something on a field, you click in the row of that field, you can either change its data type or its size. Then you go to the next one or jump to any other field and then you can adjust its size. That's the way the design works. Okay. So basically now our design is done. I want to go over to the data sheet. So I just click here on view, on the view, on the view, on the data view. You must first save the table. Yes, saved. Okay, great. Now, now I'm ready to enter my data. And let me start with the first uh, bit. So I got like Deborah Gray, okay. So I go here. Deborah. Now to go to the next uh, uh, cell, basically I just go with a tab. Gray, and then next is uh, what is it? ABC Inc. Engineer, okay. ABC Inc. Tab Engineer, and what's the phone number? Uh, 632-546, 632-546. Now, you see here the pen, that means the f that, that row or record is not saved yet. Now, once I go tap, that record is now automatically saved. I don't have to save anything. The only time you have to save anything in Access is in the design view when you change the structure of your design. But when you input data, data is automatically saved once you exit that row and you're in the next row. Now we're in the second record. We're, we're now building the second record. So I'm going to just punch in the data now. So okay, now I've just typed in the last uh, the last uh, record and then tap and bingo. Now I got all records in here. Now in Access is similar like in Excel if, if a column is too, is too narrow just or a field in this case they're called fields here just uh, drag it and you can widen it or uh, if you drag it to the to the right, you can slim it down. Right, so now we got our table ready. Data's in, design has been done. Now, what we still gotta do is we have to save our database. Remember, the name contacts is only for that table. And remember, access, or, or basically that table is just one object in that database. We have to save the database. So basically we go here to file and save database as click on that and then we save our database all, ob all open objects must be closed before you save the database 
Do you want to close it? Okay, because our table is open, yes. Do you want to save changes? Yes, let's sh save them. So, and now I can save my database and I can fix a, a place where I can save my database. And I just, I just, I just call it lesson one, for instance, okay, and save. So now my database is saved. My table is here, that's, that's, the, that's the table we, we did. It has been closed because um, the, the saving process requires that it's closed. I can double click on it to open it and there we got our data as before. Okay, great. Now, what we're gonna do, because here in this video, I'm gonna show you an overview of all those access components and we already have seen now a table, the way you, 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 you create a table. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we create a couple of queries. And to create a couple of queries, we go here to create. And there are two ways to create a query. Once, one is through the wizard and one's through the design. My opinion is if you take this option, it is much more effective, much quicker, and much uh, more flexible than using the wizard. That's why I'm gonna take this method. We go here, query design. And once you click on it, a new query is created and in the background you have the query itself and in the in the in front of us here in the foreground is you've got to choose the source of that query because remember i said that in the last video all uh, all data is saved exclusively in the tables so if i if i want to build a query I have to, uh, the query has to get the data from a certain table. Now in our case, obviously we only got one table, but we still have to, to tell that query, yes, get the data from contacts. So what I do, I just, either I double click on contacts, and there it is. So you see the query is divided into two, let me just close that. So I got like the table I need, so I can close that, don't need it anymore, and now, I, yeah, I can, the query is div or the query design view is divided into two regions. The upper region here contains the tables or tables from which the data for that query comes. And here in this lower area are the fields that are supposed to be shown in the query because I, I mentioned that in the, in the previous video as well. Uh, you can imagine a query is sort of like a filter. The table has got it all has got all the data and a query is here or the, the, the essence of a query is to sh only show specific data. Now this first query we are going to insert every field and the way you insert fields the multiple methods of doing it first of all you can either double click on the name and you see it appears here so we got the first field or you can drag it down that's the second option. A third option is you click in here and you've got it down and you choose the field you need. So I got like a uh, first name and surname, so I company, okay? I can double click again, use the drop down again, or you can drag. These are the three ways to insert fields. So now I've got like my query done, the design is done, everything, all the fields are in. And if I go to the data view, I can see the data that I got, okay? Let's save that first query. And to save, let me just lower it a bit. To save, you press on that button, and you see a query, you can give it a name. Let's call that first and surnames, okay? And okay, so that, that, that's our first query, it's been saved. Let me create another query. So let's create our second query. Again, I go to create, query design. And this time, I just need, uh, I, I, we just first of all, let me just insert the table we got. And obviously, let me just say something. Not only can you insert tables into um, a query, you can also use another query as a source for your query. Obviously, that source query would have to have its data from a certain table. I mean, at the end of the line, it's the tables which contain all the data, okay? We're gonna take the table, add, and in this case, we just are, I'm just interested in two fields, the company and the phone number, okay? And if I go to view, I see that's the data. So you see here the principle of 
queries. I don't need the first names, I don't need the surnames, I don't need the positions or anything like that. I just need these two. So I just do a build a query for these two things and there you go. Okay, and I can save again, save that query as a uh, company's phone. Okay, great. So now in our database, we have one table, two queries. Now we can, we can create the next object, which is basically a form. Okay, so go over to create. And here in this case, I'm gonna use the form wizard because um, we're going to cover forms in depth in subsequent videos and there's a lot of material first to teach before we can start uh, building forms from scratch. So in the interest, in the interest of time saving, I'm just going to go use the form wizard instead of form design. Uh, so we go into the wizard and here again, uh, the wizard needs to know what is the basis of that form. That form is either based on a query or on a table. We're going to use the query first and surnames and we're going to insert all fields. So this is the way you insert all fields. If you want, if you don't want to insert them at all, you go like this. If you just want to insert specific fields, this and this. So this is like only specific fields and this way you got them all. Okay, then next. Now you can choose between columnar or, or tabular or data sheet or justified. Let me just explain the difference between the first two. Columnar means you just see one record at a time, whereas tabular means you just uh, you see all records in a sort of a table. And we'll just take columnar or columnar and then next. And you can keep the name. Uh, just let's let me call it a different name let me call it just uh, form uh, all data okay uh, let me use underscores as well all data okay and finish so there we go you see here now we've got the data that data comes from the table and here is our form and here we can jump through the records. Obviously, professional forms would have buttons here, which take you to specific records. They would have search boxes and so on. So most of those um, business applications you see, let's say if you go to a travel agent, the programs they use there, they're basically using forms which extract data uh, from a database. And this is exactly what we've done here. Obviously, our form is quite primitive. It doesn't have any buttons, any search boxes, but basically the, the principle is the same. All right. So that's our first four. Let's uh, do a second form. This one, a uh, tabular form of our companies and phone query. So again, I go to create. Again, I use the wizard. Uh, this time I use another query, companies phone. Insert all. Next. This time I get tabular. Next. And uh, let's call it for underscore companies phone and finish. So now you see this, and that's the, that's the, I explained it in the previous video, that's the point of having forms, because here in the forms, you can format your data much better than in tables. In tables, you, you don't have a lot of formatting options, but in forms, you can add a lot of color, a lot of buttons, a lot of search boxes, all of that stuff cannot be done in tables or for that, for that matter, in queries. That's why queries and tables look bare bones. They're just there to hold the data. The, the, the whole um, what, uh, you know, a user interface basically is done in forms and in reports. And that's what we're going to do now as a final object in our database. We're going to add a report again uh, because reports are similar to forms. You know, they're quite complex to, uh, to, to, to build from scratch. We're going to use the report wizard. And in this case, I'm going to use again the the company's phone query. I insert all fields. And uh, do you want to add anything grouping? It doesn't matter right now. And uh, you want to sort them? Yeah, why not? Let's sort them by the company ascending. Next. And I'm going to have a tabular again here. Columnar or tabular is the same thing as in forms. Columnar means on each page you would have just one record. Doesn't make any sense for us because here 
you know, we just got like for each record, we just got like two fields. So we just do tabular portrait or landscape. Landscape portrait means uh, uh, the paper pr gets printed longitudinal, like like the way it looks here. And landscape is uh, uh, breadth wise. We take portrait next and just call a report underscore company's phone and finish. You see, and report is another. Uh, uh, type of user interface this time this type of user interface is not done for the screen but for a printer so basically this is what you use on the screen with buttons and stuff like that and this is what you want to print out and send to people okay so there you see the difference between a report a form of the same data it's the same data that's a form that's a report the report is done for the printer and the form is for uh, for screen work and all those forms and reports, these are the user interfaces of the database. This is actually what your user is going to be seeing. He's not going to be seeing this stuff. This stuff is you as a developer will see this stuff. And users will see forms and reports. So and that's basically an overview of Access. Uh, it's quite a long video, but uh, now you've seen all those components. Uh, that make up an access database and in future we're going to cover each of these components and as well as automation basically vba and macros more in depth